Hello everybody, welcome to my weekly sleep clinic. I'm really, really happy to have Alison here. Alison's an amazing lady who helps people with wellness, back pain and lots of gut issues. And I'm a wellness practitioner and also a sleep expert in the way of solutions. I'm interested in how people can solve their sleep issues. So over to you, Alison, what would you like to say to quickly introduce yourself? Hi everyone. Uh... I've been helping people with postural pain and digestive abdominal pain for over 25 years now. And I focus on a, a mind-body process to do that. So I call myself a food coach and a movement specialist. Wonderful. I like the way you take away people's pain. That's so good. Wonderful. So um, in my interactions with you, because we go to net networking for good and I see you at different places as well, um, you're a lady who values sleep. Um, so why do you value sleep so much? Oh, it's so important for brain functioning and how you interact with people. If you're sleep deprived, you can be very snappy. Your whole effectiveness at work isn't as good. And your whole enjoyment of life deteriorates. So sleep is really, really important. Good quality rest is key to, to um, a happy life. Yeah, brilliant. One of the things I'm really interested that you talk about is the gut. So what has the gut uh, got to do with sleep, Alison? Well, if we have overeaten in the evening, then our body is active digesting food rather than trying to get to sleep. So eating, a, a lot of my clients, they come to me with abdominal pain and the abdominal pain is waking them up in the in the night. So, you know, eating food that is in alignment to your body is really key to a good quality sleep. And the way the hormones work, you know, if you're if you've eaten a, a late meal, then your body will have to produce insulin to stabilize your blood sugar levels, and that prevents the sleeping hormone from working. It sort of counteracts it. So. Um, melatonin needs to have the absence of insulin in order for it to work so that's the key thing about eating the quality of food very good it's yeah. really interesting because you were also saying to me um, before that um, you need um, you know you need all lovely hormones to do things in your body so the way they, they interact is really important which is something that a lot of us don't really think about when we think about sleep and rest and relaxation. So um, one of the things people talk about is cortisol as well, you know, the, and adrenaline, things that want us to like fight. And when we relax in the evening, um, hopefully we would have had a nice meal and it was settled and then we can, you know, minimize um, cortisol, minimize adrenaline. And it, so, so that we can, um, you know, encourage us to relax and have all the relaxation hormones come up as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we need a sort of wind down approach. And if we've overeaten, it's difficult for us to wind down and relax because mm. the body actually wants to be active mm. after it's after it's eaten to help with that digestion pro process. Yeah. So uh, overeating means you really sluggish. Your body is yeah. stimulating all your digestive system to digest the food. And yet that's the thing that needs to go into hibernation mode yeah. when we go to sleep. Yeah. So one of the things that people can do to improve their sleep is look at their evening meal. Yeah. And if they find that they're eating late, you know, after seven o'clock. Yeah. Then that means that the food's still going to be in their system when they're trying to get to sleep. Yeah. So if they can bring their meal earlier. Now, not everyone could do that because of their yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. So what you could do is make that meal as simple as possible so it's yeah. digested really easily. Yeah. So you might want to just have um, some soup, something they like, just have vegetables. Yeah. Um, but it depends where you are. So this is where I, where I work with my clients. So I always think, well, where are you? And then what's the next step? that you can make a small incremental step that you can repeat yeah, and establish that as a habit yeah, so that it doesn't feel as if you're changing too much too soon. Yeah. So if someone came to me and they said, well, you know, I have chicken and rice for my evening meal. Yeah. You know, 
So I would say, right, we'll just decide whether you're going to have the rice or the chicken. Yeah. Yeah. So they could say, well, I have a chicken curry. Yeah. Rice. You say, well, part the rice. Yeah. And say, well, I'll have that for another time. Yeah. And just have the chicken with the vegetables. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and then that is is able to leave your stomach in about three hours. Yeah. Whereas if you had the rice with it, yeah, then the rice and the protein, the chicken, means that your digestive enzymes struggle with digesting those two types of food. Yeah. So it stays in your stomach for six hours. Wow, that's interesting. Which means that it starts entering your bloodstream when you're trying to get to sleep, mm. and then you've got that insulin melatonin conflict. Yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. So I say to people, you know, it's not necessarily having to change things that you eat. It's just um, the timing and the combination yeah. that you could just tweak to make a big impact. Yeah. Wow, that's really good. Thank you. So, and then if you want to take a step further, because everyone, you know, worried about diabetes, because because melatonin fights with insulin, then Eating a badly combined meal, so protein and carbohydrate in the evening, raises your chances of getting diabetes. Mm. So you could also say, well, if I food combine my meal, it reduces my chance of getting diabetes. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. 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 So so there's lots of positive knock-on effects. If you if you make your sleep the thing that you're working with, then it, it'll have lots of knock-on effects, doesn't it? You say, mm. well, if I, if I make that a priority and I'm going to change what I eat, then it also gives me the benefit of um, better health. So another thing that people find is that they can eat exactly the same amount of calories, but if they eat their food earlier on in the day, they can lose weight, but they haven't changed their calories, you see. So Michael Mosey did a really good um, program about this. It's in my blog, the link to that, where they, they did this test to see if people ate more at lunchtime and less in the evening, but they ate exactly the same amount of calories, they that group of people would lose weight. So it's really not about counting calories. Yeah. And they slept better. <laughs> Wonderful. That's really good. Yeah, so if you, again, focus your sleep, then it can also sort weight problems. Yeah. Lovely. And do you recommend that people um kind of drink as well to you know because I always say to people, please drink, don't drink anything two hours before going to bed, because a, a lot of people find that get getting up in the middle of the night to go to to the loo. So I I work I recommend that to people. What what are your thoughts on that drink the drinking? Yeah, I totally, totally agree with you. So if people say, oh, yeah, but I, I'm used to drinking at night, you know, I'm thirsty. So the stepping stones that I say to my clients are, well, if you really want something, put it in your mouth, sluice it round and spit it out. Mm. Because then it's not coming down your digestive mm. tract, which yeah. stimulates your digestion, which yeah. causes your body to wake up. Yeah. So, and that... that a really good time to drink water is between three and five mm. in the afternoon. Yeah. Because that's your bladder and kidney time where yeah. those organs are at their peak. Yeah. So if you drink then, you're less likely to be thirsty yeah. in the evening and at yeah. night. Yeah. So, that's good. Yeah. So the key thing, because some people wake up because their body's thirsty because mm. they don't drink during the day. Yeah. So you're in a sort of chicken and egg situation because yeah. they're they want to drink something and then they're going to get back to sleep. Yeah. And what you want to do is stop them from waking up in the night. Yeah. So you're gradually getting more water in the day. Yeah. So in the morning is really key because your body's most dehydrated then. Yeah. And then in the afternoon, so that your body can wee out any excess before you go to sleep. Yeah, that's yeah. really important. Because that's yeah. what I said to one of my clients, and he was able to sleep for six hours at a stretch because he he didn't drink anything two hours before going to bed. 
which is Brilliant. a revolutionary yeah. for him because before then he was getting up every hour to go to the loo. Yeah. And that's yeah. awful. Yeah. I mean, during, um, you know, lockdown, uh, anxiety for a lot of people is high. Yeah. Um, and I really, I used to wake up in the night and just go to the loo and go back to sleep. But if I woke up then, my mind would just churn and churn and churn. And I couldn't get back to sleep because of all the worries. So I made it a real priority to organise my drinking so that I would not wake up at all to go to the toilet in the night. So yeah. I go to bed at 10 and get up at 5 and I don't need yeah. to get up. So yeah. You can do it. Yeah, it's it is yeah. possible, definitely. I, yeah. I urge people to actually do that because it really does help. Because if you don't get up in the middle of the night, you don't put the light on, which again disrupts sleep. And then you're you're more rested and you can get your full cycle of sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's training yourself. Yeah. Because you know what if you if you're out and about and you think, oh, you know, I need a bowel movement and it's not time, you you get an urge, but then it'll pass because your body mm -hmm. stops sending that stimulus to you that you need a bowel movement. Interesting. It's the same with a wee. Mm -hmm. You can get this urge that you need the toilet. Yeah. No, you know, the the stimulus if you if you wait for a little while, the stimulus will subside. And your your brain stops sending you the stimulus. So Definitely. it's a, a training process. Brilliant. And hopefully you've got a good pelvic floor as well. Yeah, exactly. And that can be obviously um increased and strengthened as well with the exercises yeah. and things. Yeah. 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 Lovely. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Do you have any other further comments to help us with our sleep and our gut? Any closing comments? Uh, sorry, what did you say you've got? Closing comments. Oh, closing yeah. comments, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so to me, um, t t tips on how to get back to sleep once you've woken up. So you might not need the toilet, or you were desperate for the toilet and you had to go, and now how are you going to get to sleep? So um, the book that I've written about how to rebalance your diet with the power of the moon, and that's called The Jigsaw Method. Um, if you bought that book as part of that you get these free resources these audio recordings and those processes help you get back to sleep so we bring the mind and bring it into parts of our body darting it about because usually when we're thinking in the night we've got really fast thoughts like this so you want to meet your mind where it is and get your mind into your body which grounds you and get your mind into your breathing, which calms you down. And that's what that audio recording will help you with. And if you practice that regularly, you won't need to listen to it. You've got that, that uh, process in your own mind, so you can just start thinking it as you're lying in bed. So they're really good tools to help you get back to sleep. Mm, that's important because as soon as people get up, they should go back to sleep because it really helps. And the perfect people who are perfect at sleeping, usually they wake up four times in the night and then they all they don't even notice because they, they're straight back to sleep, straight back to sleep. Back to sleep. Yeah, yeah, so basically they're sleepwalking then, aren't they? <laughs> and they don't and they don't notice because it's just one of those things that you just do. If you if you're a perfect sleeper, you would go to bed, say, at 10 and wake up at six. But you will have some some something in your body because you sleep between an hour and an hour and a half of the sleep cycle. You wake up and then you just, oh, I'm going back to sleep. You just do it naturally if you're a perfect sleeper. Yeah, yeah. Without even thinking about it. Yeah, so you're saying that you only sleep for about an hour and a half and then you wake up, do you? Most people do. We sleep, we have our sleep cycle for an hour and a half and then we wake up. But it's it's quite, if it's a few, for three, four minutes or less, and then we'll go back to sleep. But a, a, a perfect sleeper would do that, but they won't even notice. They won't even notice. They won't even notice. But so, but if a person's anxious or they've got other things, that's when they might wake up or they might notice. But there's other things that disturb our sleep, like a fox or something or some some noises. But most yeah. people will wake up four times a night, but they don't. They just go straight back to sleep. And they go straight back to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I got a client and she's she had a terrible thing happen to her. Um, oh. A burglar is coming in in the middle of the night. Sorry, healing thing. And so she has a problem going to sleep 
Mm. And it happened when her children were really young. Mm. And now her children are old and she's got, you know, she's grand grandmother now. But she's still got that pattern of waking mm. up in the night. Yeah. And it's a wide awake because she's yeah. alert, you know. Yeah. With and so we've been working working to get her sleep pattern yeah. calming down so that if she does so that, that that hour and a half, yeah. she managed to stretch it yeah. to two hours. Yeah. And then when she wakes, she doesn't stay up for another two hours. Exactly. She feels safe. Up. Yeah. Working to make her feel safe. Yeah. 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 So that's, and it, oh, yeah, I'm giving her some reflexology with that. So that's another thing that I do. Well done. I, I, we do reflexology on my own feet before Fantastic. I go to bed. That's very, very That'll good. Calm the body down. Yeah. Brilliant. Wonderful. Yeah. So if you've got yeah. any questions, if anyone's got any questions and they are for a free 20 minute consultation to help them with their diet to improve their sleep. So yeah. so um my number is 07929-151-240 and my website's integratinghealth.com. And they can find your number on your website. And my number's on my website, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much for coming here and offering a different, a new dimension to our sleep because we all need, I need, I'm improving my sleep all the time and I'm sure, you know, we're all working on different things to help us um, improve our well-being and maintain our well-being. Definitely. And it also um, prevent our uh, things happening as well. As you said, you know, preventing diabetes and things like that so it's prevention is obviously better than cure so if we can implement all the things that you know you've suggested hopefully we can prevent things happening to us in the future yeah exactly yeah thank you very much thank Thanks, you Linda. okay